Hi, this is Lois, no cruise control. Welcome to my final vlog aboard Golden Horizon. Um, sadly, this one was filmed at home, as you can see. <laughs> um, more about that in the vlog. Hope you enjoy. Hi, this is Lois, no cruise control. So I did my final vlog um, on board Golden Horizon. Actually, no, my day four vlog aboard Golden Horizon. And filmed it, and then... <laughs> came back to the cabin, checked for the sound, and discovered that there was none. <laughs> and then I discovered I lost my Rode. So I've got my like Rode um, microphone, so it's not on this one, so I don't know if the sound will be as good. Um, I've lost the connection for it. It wasn't that reception. It's bright red and like um, curly, but yeah, I've ordered a new one on Amazon, so the future vlogs will be with it, but this one, not so much, but we'll see. I'm sure um, it'll be alright, but so yeah, I thought I'd repeat um, vlog four because I've done one um, in like the reception bar area on Golden Horizon, but um, yeah, no sound whatsoever, just me, mouth moving. Um, I had wanted to do one in the library, but every time I went to the library, um, oh, stuck in my hair. Someone was there. Um, I didn't really want to do a vlog with someone like there sitting by me watching it. Um, anyway, day four on Golden Horizon. Um, so we woke up, we went for breakfast. Um, I had an omelette, which was delicious. We, after breakfast, we went out and had a nose at the tenders. Asked the chap if he thought we'd be allowed off, and he was like, You're from here, you live here. Well, not Plymouth but yeah um, but that was not the answer we were still not allowed off which is fine do you know like we didn't we came to see the ship we didn't come to see Plymouth and cows we can see them other times um, yeah so it wasn't a surprise to not be let off I think it was a surprise to some but you know um, we go with the flow uh, a walking tour did get off and go ashore and they said the town cry was there to welcome them and they um, came ashore and they came back with loads of goodies and they had like um, Plymouth gin and Plymouth fudge and all sorts so they were very happy returning from their excursion. Um, Trade and Voyagers put on tender rides again so we went into Plymouth and um, sailed on our lifeboat tender around the harbour which the way the angle of Plymouth is like you couldn't always see our ship from shore so we must have looked really strange coming around in a lifeboat if people weren't aware of the ship being in um, and couldn't see it we must have looked bizarre <laughs> but obviously we were too well fed to be people that were poor people coming across, bless them um, from France it's a bit of, they've gone a bit wrong if they've got there um, but yeah, people were like mm, who were these people on a boat? because <laughs> um, they couldn't see our ship uh, so that was lovely and then on the way back we were with sat with Rich and Helen um, from Visit With Us and I think the man clocked his like professional lens camera and then he was like oh can you take pictures of the paddle boarders can we go slow past here can we so we had a really slow tour of the ship which was amazing to take so many photographs um, we then got back and went straight for a sit down lunch I think it was our first sit down lunch aboard which was lovely we had like it was like a cabbage soup to start. It had a much nicer name than cabbage soup, but it was delicious. Uh, I can't remember what the name was. I have to have a look in the old menus. <laughs> uh, we then had steak and chips. Uh, it's the first time and only time we had chips on board, actually. We're not big chips eaters, to be fair, but um, I think we were all right. Uh, then we had the most amazing chocolate and bread and butter pudding dessert, which like had caramel sauce on, and it was just deadly but so delicious uh, usually on Golden Horizon people are offered uh, wine with their, with their meal uh, we were offered it, Dave usually had it I'm not a big wine drinker so I tended to have Sprite as well which was included but all of our drinks were included on the, the inaugural voyage, the maiden voyage so um, which was great, we had a lot of cocktails <laughs> um, we then went and sat up on deck and sat in the sunshine. We had amazing weather over the majority of this voyage. It was just the last day that was a bit dull. 
the other days were fantastic. It was like we were in the Med or the Caribbean. It was amazing. Um, yeah, sat on deck, read a bit um, in the sunshine. There was lots of little boats that were coming around the ship, um, and if they saw someone like looking over the side, they'd be like, "Where are you from?" Expecting us to say somewhere really exotic, and then we'd be like, "Uh, Dover." <laughs> um, and one little kid was like, "Did you open this ship?" <laughs> and I was like, hmm, "No, <laughs> I wish." Not even Trade on Voyagers own this ship, so do you know there's no hope for me owning it. Um, yeah, people were sweet. Actually, I found out after my boss's boss, um, her husband had been sailing around our ship on the day. She was sending me pictures um, that they had taken from their little motorboat of our ship. Um, so I've sent pictures of the other way, like what the ship's like <laughs> to them. We over oh, canoes and jet skis and, and um, windsurfers and everything like coming past, like anything that we could think of on the sea were coming past. The, the pilot boat came for nose and then came obviously later to drop off the pilot. O and L I were around, <laughs> like everyone came for a nose. <laughs> um, we then waited on top on upper deck, sunbathing in the pool, uh, reading until sail away and then after we sailed away from our anchorage, like we went at port, we were or anchor off Plymouth. Um, but lots of little boats came and joined us as we as we left. And then we headed south for a bit and put up the sails. Um, so watching the sails go up was quite a novelty. Um, the it was yeah, the music was lovely, the um, sails going up were lovely. I have a video of it that I'll I'll make a probably a shorter YouTube video well, if I say shorter, I had a video of about ten minutes, but um obviously sails going up on a ship like that is not a quick thing. Um but it's just it's like quite moving in a way, like watching it all. It's just fantastic. Um it was yeah, I mean you have to go and watch the sails go up if you go on Golden Horizon, you're on a sailing ship, a rigged ship, you have to. It's just fantastic. So we watched them go up, um and then we went and got ready for dinner. And dinner was delicious. We had like chicken wings and soy sauce and carrot and ginger soup, which was divine. And then a beef tenderloin. Um and I had the cheese board for dessert and Dave had like a raspberry chocolate cake. Um, the presentation of food on the ship was fantastic, like, so, it looks like an artist, um, like a work of art, I'm <laughs> sorry, it's early on Sunday morning and I'm trying to think of my words, yeah, each plate was like a work of art, and the, if you're a meat eater, and I'm pretty sure that it would be the same for the vegetarian options, but I, I didn't have them, they're so generous with the, the chunks of meat that they give you, like, it's just... Uh, yeah, fabulous. There's nothing at all I could say that was wrong with the, with anything on the ship, but definitely not the restaurant um, and the service. It was fantastic. And even though in my first vlog, breakfast was weird. Like they, I think it was just first day of like, oh, what's going on? There's people on our ship. You know, they've had it to themselves for months, and then suddenly we all turn up. Um, but it, they were just fantastic. Like. That was clearly just a first day blip. Um, I mean, it didn't even matter. I, like, we don't mind waiting. I don't. I wasn't moaning. I was just, I think, hungry. <laughs> um, yeah, no, they're all fantastic. Then we had some coffee after dinner. The coffee on board is really nice. Um, and we went up. On, I went up on deck and filled some vlogs with the sails up behind me. So that was quite nice. Um, I was trying to film in different parts of the ship, so like I said, I, I managed to, I just didn't always have the sound. So I'll sort that out for Iona and Scarlet Lady and um, Morello and such like. Um, we, yeah, it feels weird talking to the camera at first, but I think that Mari and, I can't remember the other person, but they've said to me, it gets better. <laughs> you, you feel less weird talking to a camera. Um, I'm hoping really on something like Iona I could get like Andy and Kirsty and um, Steph and Matt maybe all separately and we can do like a I can do like a guest star vlog or something we can have a little chat I'm a bit shy to begin with but you know I warm up and then we'll talk for a while so maybe after a few cocktails as well you know we'll have a chat about 
Iona and what we think of that. I might email them and ask them. If they don't watch this, I'll know. <laughs> um, yeah, so on those videos, some of them I do pause occasionally because there's people coming or you'll see on my face and you suddenly go, <gasps> and basically it's like, oh my god, someone's coming, I'm going to press pause, but do you know what, I'm going to get over that soon. Um, yeah. So we took, oh, I took a lot of footage on my new gimbal. I think it's called a gimbal, I don't know, but it's like a, a handle that makes everything smooth. Um, initially it didn't seem very happy on the ship, but I think whatever makes it make smooth footage and in there must have been a bit upset by the movement of the ship even though the, we didn't feel any movement but you know it's a sensitive equipment I'm sure but once I got the hang of it oh it fit it was really quite cool um it's much smoother than me holding the camera in my hand or me holding the phone in my hand um and yeah I did a ship tour with it so I'll look out for that on YouTube I will be posting quite quickly in quick succession some of these posts because um I'm on a cruise again in two weeks and that's a seven night one so I'll have more footage and then it's Scarlet Lady four days after that and then it's like Morello Explorer another four days and that yeah so I don't really want random bits I want to get everything out quite quickly I don't want to be putting you know Golden Horizon videos out in September or something I am um, because I'm lucky and have lots of cruises booked I want to kind of get them out in a timely fashion so you will be bombarded with Golden Horizon content for the next two weeks um, but after that will be Iona for a week and yeah and such like but we'll see we'll see how that goes um, it's also got to be done around my full-time job and then I have an on-call element of my job where I work 21 hour shifts sometimes um, I'm working next weekend as well between so we'll see we'll I'll try um, then we went to bed, early-ish, um, with a plan to get up on Friday for sunrise. I'm going to carry on into my day five because um, I'm probably in disembarkation day as well, just because uh, they're all going to be out here, <laughs> outside at home, um, because of the no sound, which I will have to make sure doesn't happen on Iona. Um, so on Friday I woke up. On day five, I woke up really early, uh, at five-ish, and went up to see sunrise, and was rewarded massively. So it was amazing. So I'm standing on like the fly bridge bit, and I'm looking out to sea, and there's these things like jumping out of the water. I'm like, what are they? And then I tricked there were dolphins, and there were loads of them. I mean, at least 10, 20 of them all jumping out, and I was in such like a dazed state, having just woken up. It took me a while to get my camera out, and when I did, it was near the end of them playing they went off um and i've got a few videos of them jumping out the water but the thing is when they jump out of the water and then you kind of assume where they'll next jump out and it's usually right in the corner of your picture or something but i got some pictures of them bless them that they're beautiful playing at the front of the ship just before sunrise and then sunrise happened which was beautiful and then um britannia pastors <laughs> Uh, really quite close by. I spent four months, I think, on board Britannia and all. It's a bit weird. It's like being caught cheating on another <laughs> on another ship. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll always like Britannia. She's a ship that we we really do like. We like her sweets a lot. I like the forward sweets for cold weather cruises and the after sweets for hot weather cruises. Um, and the Sindhu and the cookery school and the crow, like the sunset bar. It's just, we just love um, her as a ship. We then, then Arcadia came past as well. So Arcadia it looked like she was coming like full on forward. <laughs> it looked like we were gonna, you know, they were coming along, we were coming along, it looked like we were about to crash, but then suddenly she swerved and went off into the sunrise. Um, beautiful pictures, really. And then the gentleman, I don't know his name. Um, he came up and he'd always been up there when the sunrises had happened and he was the first person I'd seen since seeing the dolphins so I was like oh my god there were dolphins and he's like oh I, one day I was late for sunrise and then he was like oh next you'll tell me they were giving away donuts on the bridge <laughs> so, well they weren't giving away donuts but the bridge was open I was really impressed with the bridge actually because they have an open door policy 
And I think if it was me at five in the morning and I saw a passenger around, I'd be like, oh my God, like, give us a break. <laughs> but uh, instead they saw me and they opened the door. I was like, oh, that's really cute. I didn't actually go in. I was more transfixed by Arcadia, Britannia, the sunrise and the dolphins. But I thought that was really sweet and really nice. Um, it made me feel quite welcome upon deck there. So then after the sunrise, I then uh, decided to do my chip tour. So off I went to round with my gimbal um, in hand in front of me and did a bridge, uh, bridge a ship tour. Um, I think I did most of the ship. I didn't do the hospital. Didn't do the inv individual rooms of the spa. Um, I could have really at 5 a.m. if the doors were open, but never mind. Hindsight's a wonderful thing. Um, the spa is not somewhere I spent much time. Well, any time. Um, yeah, did, did the tour. It was nice, and there's a few people in it saying good morning. Um, crew, no passengers. They were all sensibly asleep. Um, yeah, so I did that the tour and then went back to the cabin and went back to bed for a few hours. Um, Dave had stayed in bed and then we woke up, went for breakfast, had steak and eggs, um, which was like my go-to breakfast on there eventually. It was very extravagant. But then you end up thinking, oh my god, I've had steak for like my last four meals, which is not good. Uh, well, I mean, it was amazing, but yeah, probably not healthy. Um, lots of iron though. Um, protein. Then, after breakfast, we went up onto the upper deck just to see what the um, weather was like, and it was quite windy and cold. I'm back. Um, a Sainsbury's shopping van came and was making loads of noise, so I was like, oh, I think I'll just pop off for a minute and just um, not have the banging in the background. Um, what was I talking about? So we had breakfast, we, it was, yeah, we went up on deck, it was a bit windy. It wasn't really a day that we really thought we'd be sitting by the pool that much. Um, so we went and got our books, and then I remembered that there was a talk on in the morning by one of the gentlemen on board about, um, like conflicts of the ocean and, um, immigration and yeah it was it was interesting the there was quite a few people there and then after that we went back to the cabin for a little bit and did some packing the luggage um luggage mats had appeared on the bed as a hint you know come on pack up we're gonna check you off soon <laughs> um we had a really lazy day on the friday actually we um Read a bit in the cabin, and then we went for lunch, um, which was delicious. We had the whole three-course lunch in the dining room, um, and then in the afternoon, we just chilled out a bit, really. Um, we did go up with a grill, Horizon Grill and Bar, I think, read a bit, um, had a couple of drinks, and then returned... Um, at six o'clock there was a cocktail party, like a farewell cocktail party, so we went to that and sat with um, Rich and Helen from Visit With Us and had some cocktails. It was a lovely cocktail, um, like blueberries in it, and um, it was called uh, Horizon Haze. I was calling it a, a golden breeze I think or something I don't know basically it was the really nice cocktail with blueberries in it <clears throat> um it was delicious and then the captain did a, a little speech and we had two captains oh it's the same breeze again two captains we had a a like um captain and a when we were under a motor yacht and an engine and then we had a captain a sailing captain as well um so he did a speech, and then the cruise director did a little speech. He tended to come on talking at midday and five, but obviously this was a party, he did a talk in there. And then we went for dinner. Dinner was delicious. And then after dinner, we 
went out to the Horizon Grill and Bar to listen to It Takes Two, the the duo love live music on board. Um, and because the weather was bad, they we did a few a few songs out there, and then they decided that it'd be safe to move inside. There was a bit of a thunderstorm going on, but the ship didn't move at all. Um, we were not moving, but you could keep seeing the lightning in the corner, corner of your eye, and you were kind of like, hmm, we're probably the largest thing around for miles. Um, but I don't think any lightning hit us. Um, we then moved inside, sat down, had a table, and then um, Mitch and Alan joined us, and then we just had quite a few cocktails watching the live music and having a laugh. <laughs> it was good fun. Uh, and then we went to bed quite late for us, um, and then got up early on Saturday morning and went for breakfast, the final breakfast of this cruise. Um, disembarkation was really quite chilled out. Um, we, well, if you read the literature, we were to leave our cabins by nine. If you listened to the announcements, it was 8.30. Because we wanted to make our cabin stewards life easy, we left 8.30. So we left at 8.30, um, we went to sit in the reception area for a little bit, just to, you know, get our bearings. And then disembarkation was literally walking up to the upper deck. And then they had Dover, the cruise terminal had, do you know like the, like the air bridges and airports where they have in cruise ships? They had one of those attached to our ship um, on the upper deck. And then we walked off through that into Dover cruise terminal. So it's a bit of a family affair. I think the marketing ladies daughters were there welcoming us ashore they'd been on the ship with us recognized them um very lovely and sending us off in the right direction uh luggage reclaim our our suitcases seemed to be the only ones there i think everyone else had gone even though there seemed to be lots of people on the ship still but i think quite a few were doing back-to-back -back, um voyages um picked up our suitcases went to cps so the first disappointment of the holiday, CPS, the Cruise Passenger Services, Cruise Parking in Dover. I mean, we when we, we parked the car to have under, um, like inside parking, because we've been in Dover on a cruise ship and have seen the water like fly over the seawall to the sea on the other side of the, the concrete um, port area. <laughs> Um, so we were like, we do not, we love our car too much, we do not want our car to be under that. And being British, we know the weather can happen like that any time. Um, so we ensured it was inside, we paid for it inside. We, when we checked in, we kept saying to them, you know this is inside. And they were like, yes, and they showed us a ticket and it said inside, and off they went to park it inside. And then we came back and we went off to walk inside to collect our, our car. And they were like, where are you going? We're like, to our car. And they were like, your car's not over there, your car's outside. <laughs> we were like, excuse me, what? <laughs> yes. So they just left our car outside, taken our money for inside, and plonked it outside. So we shall be getting a refund. Um, to the whole thing, I don't mind, okay, the car was outside, you know, that's happened now. If it's rusty, they'll, we'll charge them. Like, that's fine. It's more the whole taking a larger amount of money, but then not fulfilling that service which really irritates me and I'm not one to complain but when people take your money and then try and like give you a substandard product that really really irritates me um so yes they irritated me <clears throat> it does take a lot to irritate me if you've been watching these vlogs I see the positive and everything so they really irritated me um but yeah in the great scheme of things I'll forget because you know there's worse things to worry about um but yeah be wary about the parking services in dover they are quite the amateur affair um i actually dave had seen on we have a tracker on the car and dave had seen on the tracker that it had been outside all week and i was like oh the, it will be um inaccuracies in the the you know satellite of the tracker and stuff you know because when when we're in our home, it makes us look like we're, you know, a few houses down the road. So I was like, jump, it will it'll be fine, it would have been inside. So actually, no, the tracker was quite accurate and it was outside all along. Um, 
but at least we have that as evidence to them to show that they didn't just bring it outside for us to pick up. Um, which thankfully they didn't do because I was just waiting for them to lie and go, well, we've just bought it out this morning. And you'd be like, mm, no, you don't. Our car has a tracker on it and we can show you that you're not. But anyway, I'm over it now. <laughs> but that is sadly the only thing that was bad about the cruise, the parking. And that had nothing to do with Golden Horizon. and had everything to do with Port of Dover CPS. Um, but yeah, I don't have any other Dover cruises for the time being. If I do, I think I will just get a taxi, no, I'll get a train and the taxi because I love my car too much. Um, <clears throat> and that was it. We were home because we live in Kent, well, the Kent London border, we live in Bexley Village. Um, we were home within an hour after disembarkation, which was great. And now it's the countdown to the next cruise. I'm sorry if you're looking at this and my eyes are always over to like that way. I'm looking at the screen on the camera, which I think I need to take away eventually and just look at the camera. Um, because yeah, it looks like I'm not looking at you when I'm looking at the camera. Um, yeah, countdown to the next cruise now. 13 days, excuse me, 13 days until um, I'm aboard Iona for her maiden voyage. Um, because I've got like the top tier of loyalty um, I go up actually to Baltic I think it is on this cruise so on Iona in November I'll be Baltic level um, on this cruise I'm Caribbean level which is like the top sort of general um, tier and then as you spend more nights aboard you go up the Baltic and Ligurian top, um, tier. But yeah, so I'm on the... I have 12 o'clock chicken because of my loyalty, which is one nice little perk. Um, so I am going to be the first person on Iona's Maiden Voyage. I'm, you know, going to be there. And try not to drink all the champagne before the rest of them get on. <laughs> um, yeah, so my vlogs will be back on Iona, in different parts of Iona, um, hopefully not on my balcony. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for watching, bye. Hi, thank you for watching my vlogs aboard Golden Horizon Tradewind Voyages. Um, in a few weeks I shall have some vlogs on, on Piano Iona and her maiden voyage of which I go on on Saturday. Um, thanks for watching. If you hit subscribe, it would be great. And turn on notifications to find out when I publish future vlogs. Thank you.